Good morning. You can take the message outline from your bulletin. We're calling this service We Love Mission Sunday in honor of our missionary, Donna Howard. After I share a few comments, we'll see a 15-minute video of Donna's work in the Philippines. And then Donna and the shepherds will come up for a question and answer session. That's the reason for the chairs up here. Followed by prayer and the laying on of hands. When Jesus talked about our mission collectively and individually, he used words like come, follow, go, tell, make, baptize, teach, and obey. He summarized the church's mission in Matthew 28, beginning in verse 18. Then Jesus came to them, this is to the 11 apostles, Judas, of course, isn't there. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. This is what is called the Great Commission. Now the term Great Commission isn't in the Bible. It's a term we come up with to describe what Jesus said here. We call it great because it's great. We call it a commission because they were commissioned. But it begins right here at Port City. Our mission isn't a duty or a task or a burden. It is a dream and a vision and a passion that drives this congregation collectively and motivates the individual members that make it up. The Great Commission can only be accomplished through the cooperation of our membership. And so we support with our prayers and our money the work of Donna Howard overseen by this congregation. Donna has traveled to the Philippines multiple times and lived there many, many months. This is not Donna going to the Philippines for two weeks. This is Donna going to live there for a long period of time. And she is now planning on returning. And so we have invited Donna to share with us the results of her work, her plans for the future, and ways we can become involved. In the modern history of Churches of Christ, women have made an incredible impact in people's lives by taking God's Word to foreign countries. We may not be aware of it, but there's been at least a half a dozen very well-known women who went to foreign lands to be missionaries. We don't hear about it because it's a part of the forgotten history of our church. I would like to share with you the legacy of one woman. Sarah Andrews was born in 1893 in Tennessee. At the age of 14 in 1906, she was baptized by immersion into Jesus Christ. In 1916, this was in the middle of World War I, America was just becoming involved in the war going on mostly in Europe. So the focus of our country was this, this huge war that was happening. But in 1916, at the age of 24, sponsored by no congregation and financially supported by no one except her parents, she got on a boat alone in San Francisco to head to Tokyo, Japan to be a missionary. Imagine a 24-year-old woman alone, 1916, heading across the Pacific Ocean to be a missionary. 
She planned on staying in Japan for five to seven years, which became 46 years. Her first years were spent in Tokyo learning the Japanese language, which is no easy task, right? Because their symbols aren't anything like English symbols. You, know, you can learn Spanish and Latin. At least the symbols are similar to English, not so in the Japanese language. She started teaching English Bible classes. She ran a kindergarten, a Sunday school, and established four congregations of churches of Christ that be grew into eight. She taught sewing and cooking to the neighborhood women and children and helped them learn about Jesus Christ. As the years passed, the children became teenagers and many of them were baptized, mostly along with their mothers, a few fathers. In Japanese culture, not a lot of guys were interested in New Testament Christianity. But one of her early converts was a young girl who was known as the Bible woman. And she and her mother would become lifelong friends and co-workers with Sarah Andrews. She was imprisoned in Japan during World War II. After the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor in December of 1941, the following day we declared war on Japan and relationships between the two countries were not very good. And so Sarah's possessions were confiscated and she was declared insane and sent to prison in 1942. And because of damp conditions and a starvation diet, she contracted tuberculosis and they sent her to her home in Japan to die. But she never lost sight of her mission. Even though she was very sick and weak, after the war, she opened a home for Japanese widows and encouraged young men to come to the U.S. and be educated, resulting in the establishment of Japanese churches of Christ in various places around the country where there, there was a lot of them in the population. While resting at home in Tennessee in 1958, three years before her death, her family begged her to stay. Do not, please, don't go back to Japan. And Sarah replied, It is as near to heaven from Japan as it is from Tennessee. <laughs> she died in 1961 and was buried in her adopted country of Japan. On her grave marker, the following words are etched in stone in Japanese. Somebody in the, translated it. She dedicated her whole life to her beloved Japan and Japanese people. She taught and trained many believers in Jesus Christ and gave all glory to God. When she knew it was time to leave, she recited Psalm 103 for hours. And it's a beautiful psalm. Read it this afternoon. 13 verses. In 13 verses, it lists 17 benefits our soul receives from the Lord. It's an incredible psalm. Which moved those attending her deathbed to tears. The contribution of women in ministry, past and present, is immeasurable. We cannot even begin to measure the incredible good women have done in ministry. I'm talking about this congregation. No way we can measure it. In Acts 2.17, in the sermon that is establishing the New Testament church, in the last day, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people your sons and daughters will prophesy. Let's not forget that the Spirit has not only been poured out on our sons, it has been poured out on our daughters too. Amen. 
So we deeply appreciate what you Christian women have contributed to the ministry of this congregation. It's just mind-boggling. Because we want to judge things by how public someone is. Well, so-and-so taught three classes and so-and-so. But there's so much. That's the tip of the iceberg. They say you only see 10% of the iceberg above the water. It's just like that with the ministry of women. It's incredible. So what can I do for Donna and her mission work? Number one, make a financial contribution. Nothing says I love you like a few dollars. In 2 Corinthians 9.13, you will honor God. You want to honor God? You will honor God through this genuine act of service because of your commitment to spread the good news of Christ and because of your generosity and sharing with them and everyone else. You can show your support for Donna, for the mission work, through a contribution. It's one way that we can participate and be involved. Because we, not all of us have Donna's gift. She has the gift to be able to go there and do it. And so we can support her in that gift. Two, give Donna verbal affirmation. You know verbal affirmation is good. Did you know that's good in a relationship? Works great in marriages. This is John 4.36. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike. So whether you're planting through prayers, monetary support, or you're on the field where the harvest is taking place, joy awaits. Because eternal good is going to come out of what you're doing. And then three is pray for a spiritual harvest of souls. There are, and Donna can correct me if I'm wrong on this, there's approximately 1,200 congregations in the Philippines and approximately 40,000 members of the Churches of Christ. A lot of it is the result of World War II. As horrible and as terrible as war is, God can use very bad things to do some good things. And Americans, we've had an, quite an influence in the Philippines since World War II. And that has resulted in congregations being established throughout the approximately 7,000 islands that make up the Philippine nation. Okay, here's 1 Corinthians 3, verse 7. The ones who do the planting or watering aren't important, but God is important because He is the one who makes the seed grow. That's right. The one who plants and the one who waters work as a team with the same purpose. Yet they will be rewarded individually according to their own work. Let's pray for the seeds going to be planted. Let's pray that God will give a harvest. And then four, remind Donna of the importance of her life-saving message. What she is bringing to the Philippines is a life-saving message. And it will make a difference in people's lives for eternity. So in Colossians 1.6, it says this same good news that came to you by a fellow whose name was Epaphras is going out all over the world. It's come to you in the city of Colossae, modern day country of Turkey. It's come to you. But now it's going out all over the world. And watch this. It is changing lives everywhere. Changing lives everywhere. Just as it changed yours. That very first day you heard and understood the truth. <laughs> in many countries, in modern times, it was Christian missionaries, and now I'm using the term Christian very broadly. It was Christian missionaries who started hospitals, schools and churches because Jesus was concerned about people's body, spirit, and soul. The body is physical health represented by hospitals. That's why hospitals were started. The spirit is intellectual health 
or education represented by schools. Schools were started by religious people at universities. The soul is eternal health represented by churches. So Donna, we deeply appreciate your work and admire your giftedness, not just your giftedness, but your willingness to exercise your giftedness. Sometimes people are gifted, but they're not going to exercise their giftedness. You are exercising your giftedness, and it's a lot. It's a, it's a long ways to the Philippines. It's a lot longer than it is going like up to Montgomery or something. We appreciate your sacrifice, and there will be people in eternity because of the work the Lord has done and is doing through you. We love you. Okay, I will turn it over to who's ever next. And the uh, children's church, they are coming in because they want to be a part of the, of the mission work. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Because he so loved me, he gave me his son. And thank you for your part in ways that you've made possible for me to be there. I arrived last April in time for the annual National Philippines Ladies Retreat. Honestly, one of the favorite things I do over there is I teach the ladies uh, Bible class on Sunday morning. And uh, it's so, it's been so awesome watching these ladies grow. They've grown in number, and I've seen them grow spiritually, and I see them reaching out and trying things on them. Some of them are starting to to teach, and some of them are leading prayers, uh, and we are, we're drawing closer. We studied the book of Colossians, the book of Philippians, and the, uh, the book of John. We've initiated some ladies' retreats in northern Cebu this past year. Before that, we have gone to a couple of uh, ladies' retreats. Uh, fellowships in Cebu City a few times, and I've even had the opportunity to speak at a couple of them. Uh, but we had we weren't having the fellowships in the north area where I live. So this last year, the Dap Dap Church, which is about 30 minutes from the, the church uh, where I'm working, uh, had our first annual ladies retreat. And then a few months later, we had the second annual ladies retreat. Uh, Fellowship at Eric Hall. Yeah. Another ladies fellowship uh, meeting we had was in the Compostela Church of Christ, about two hours away. Uh, I was asked to speak at that, and another young lady, Jen, from Eric Hall, was, was asked to speak. We um, we got hopped on the bus to go there all the way. We um, had an accident in the bus. Um, a goat went out in front of the car in front of us. The place that come to sell a church are the ones that make the fish bracelets and the purses and the earrings and things that they sell out of paper. And uh, this church is comprised almost entirely of ladies. There's maybe three or four men that's in the church. So this shows us, ladies, that uh, there's a great need for ladies in mission work. Another fellowship for the ladies that we've initiated since I've been going on to Philippines is a, a monthly fellowship for our congregation. The ladies meet uh, on the last Sunday of the month. We uh, have dinner together. We fellowship. We um, share with each other, get to know each other, and have a little devotional. And it, uh, this has been very uh, helpful in our class growing closer and in number. Uh, when I first went there uh, this summer, I also went to a youth camp on Bentayan Island, which is a small island just north of Cebu. We take a little ferry ride uh, to get there. And uh, uh, one of the things I had the privilege of doing is I, there was about maybe 40 of us who went from our area to the fellowship. 
and we um, I bought everybody lunch and it was a, a joy because there was going to be no food if I hadn't. So we stopped on the way and got uh, apples and chicken and, and bread and had a, a nice lunch on the ferry. Um, that was a challenging um, retreat. I, it was all young people and I decided that I was young at heart enough that I could go. <laughs> and we slept in tents and in tent heat and in tent bathroom situation. <laughs> but it was amazing some of the, the things we learned and the, the benefits of it and watching those kids as they uh, joined in uh, spiritually searching. I loved it. Also, a regular thing we do in summer is we have vacation Bible schools. Um, we have a, quite a few young people come from the Lady Christian College. Uh, they come and stay in Air Paul during the summer and help and serve there. And they, they have a lot with the vacation Bible schools in the area. We go from, from one area to the other having vacation Bible schools. And they are just um, so exciting to watch the little children. Um, one of the, the big projects that we've been part of is the building of our new church building, which has just been completed. They had their grand opening service after I got home this time in January. It was a, it was a quite an adventure building that church building from the bottom up, and we have a lot of wonderful supporters here in America and Singapore and different places who help make that possible. Um, through the power of God. Um, one of the things we would do is uh, every morning we'd have a Bible study with the workers who were building the church. And I got to participate in that some. Brother John would read the devotional and I'd make them some kind of good muffins or goodies and coffee and, and uh, it was a way to reach out to these uh, men who were working and building the church for us. So exciting as we're building and planning this church building. Um, the Eddington Church of Christ in Canada just happened to be renovating their church and they were going to get rid of all of their pews and chairs and get new ones. And it was plenty for our church. Brother John and I oversaw this little project of building a gazebo in his garden in front of our the news market that was built um, last year, and we um, we were real proud of it. It, uh, it provides seating and a little place for fellowship in front of the Good News Market, uh, our good our Good News Clinic, and the book of Bebo is even used for a Bible class <coughs> for our children on Sunday morning. There's a little bit of material left from building the gazebo, and we use that to make some benches uh, for the for the downstairs there of the church for classrooms. And uh, we also uh, had some bookcases built for our little church library. And uh, we have some wonderful books there that different uh, churches from here in America have sent over there to furnish staff. Was able to participate in our campus ministry. Uh, that's where we go to an area high school and have a devotional um, once or twice a week. And all the students who choose can come to the devotional. And uh, it, we have reached many Christians. Many of our leaders, young leaders in the church, have come from this ministry. And uh, this past year, we added on two more high schools in the area that we go to. It, it's very exciting. Dear to my heart is the opportunity to work in the compassionate outreach there in the building. The people there are very, very poor. And we work closely with the church, benevolence. We um, we help take care of several of our most desperately needy widows, orphans. We help people when they're sick. We've helped people with funerals. We've um we help Students, we have 
a lot of young preachers that come through there and visit and we've been there to help them. This is dear to my heart. These people have a heart for sharing the goodness of Jesus with people and we've been able to help with that. We had this uh, feeding and Bible study with this little community uh, at walking distance from our church. There's just lots of children there and these people. One of our widows that we help a lot there is living in that little area and those people have been watching They've been watching while we come and have Bible studies at her house, while we help her uh, when she's uh, in trouble. And and so it's a great place but that she has set up the influence for us. We, we cooked a, a great meal for them and had a lot of children. It was, a, it was a, a wonderful time. One of the preachers and leaders there, uh, we bought him a beehive full of bees. And uh, we're excited to see if we can get that um, opportunity going there um, in Arapaw. One of the things I love so much is um, the visitors we have at Arapaw and the way that we're able to interact with them and the opportunities that's given through that. One thing, as I said earlier, is um, a lot of preachers and their wives come through visiting or various reasons and we're uh, able to uh, spend time with them and get to know them and encourage them and even help them a little financially as we're able. Um, we have this, so many wonderful groups that come and visit us. Uh, there's this uh, mobile medical uh, team that comes. They're from Alaska. This team, are, they're not Christians, but they go all over the world disasters and needy areas and, and help. And uh, to me, I've got to know a lot of these people and they are opportunities for us to share the gospel with these people and uh, as we get to know them. Uh, Air Paul Nature Retreat there in Air Paul is, uh, is listed on Airbnb. And so we get, uh, randomly we'll get people uh, who come there just to, to stay at the retreat. Uh, we met this young lady, Chloe, and her mother, Christelle, from France. And they came back. They loved it there. Um, and uh, we have high hopes of uh, sharing the good news more and more with them. Uh, they've even invited me to come and stay with them in France. And who knows if uh, they get that opportunity. Um, it's wonderful that we have so many mission teams that come there. It's so uplifting for me and the opportunity to uplift them as they experience mission work. One of the groups we have to come in, they've come uh, a few times, is a group of young people from Oklahoma Christian, uh, Christian School, and they come, uh, and they work with the medical team uh, that comes, and they go out into the community, they uh, do exams and, and wellness checks for people, they have helped so much. They've been coming for a few years, and they can see such a change in, in the health of the ones they've seen before and help now. They give violence to the children, and they have found some very serious situations that they've been able to help with. These uh, young, young people are just awesome in the way they're willing to serve and give of themselves. Every two years, a team comes from Alaska, from the Northern Lights Church of Christ. Uh, we've come to know and love them, and different ones come each year from the congregation. But that congregation is just so um, awesome in their desire for outreach and, and connecting with the world. Um, two young ladies from that same church, Kate and Leslie, uh, came and stayed for two months with me in my house in the in the uh, summer, and they were able to, to have a, a wonderful experience and help us all in in so many ways. Uh, Salvador Carriaga, uh, his mother and father and his sister came to visit us, and that was a very enjoyable experience. Uh, John Bailey is a an awesome man of God who has done so much for the work there at Dolphin. He's last year he came. He's um, he's up in his 80s. He has Parkinson's 
and he came in and you know, it was a, a joy visiting with him and, and being encouraged by him. Brother Bill Lawrence comes regularly. He's involved with our Tree of Life program a lot. That uh, outreach program we have at the ch uh, church there where uh, people here in America support children and help them to have the opportunity to go to school and give them other needs too. And it's, um, it's a great door opening opportunity for us and he's very involved. Moichi and C.K. Lee from Singapore are some of my dearest friends. They are the most, the most generous, compassionate people. They have put so much time and money into Aeropol and helping to make so many of the projects that we do possible. This past year, they usually come maybe once or twice a year. This past year, they brought a little mission group from Malaysia, this church they attend uh, part of the time. We fell in love with each other. The people at Aeropol with them and them with us. They found out that God is truly working in this place and that uh, we are only seeking his word and his way. Uh, and they were so excited. They are anxious to come back and visit again. We have very interesting visitors. One little boy, Jeremiah, he came from the streets in Cebu City. Salvador found him and brought him home and uh, he was wondering if he had been living off in the streets. He was uh, a lot of the street kids are was addicted to drugs. He was about maybe 10 years old. He said he was 14, but we doubt he was hardly 10. But um, we brought him home. We bought him some clothes. We fed him good. We um, we tried to encourage him. We, we, we even tried to get him enrolled in Green Garden Christian School um, right there near Salvador's house. Um, he couldn't handle it. He, the day before he was supposed to start the school, he ran off. He came back again, and um, but he wasn't used to living a structured life where people tell him what to do and, and help him. And so he finally ran off again, and, and we didn't see him. Later on, he came back again, and Salvador brought him to Aeropol to visit with us there. And uh, he wound up running off again. But you know, we can try the best we can. There's uh, one orphan we have there. Um, his nickname is Long Long. His real name is An Angelito. He was from a little island that um, Salvador has some property on. When they went down there to visit, they brought him back with us. His mother had died. They found him sleeping on the on the beach, and he kind of followed them around while they were visiting down there. And uh, his stepfather, who had been very cruel and abusive to him, gladly signed over the rights to him. And so he lives with us, but he's a success story. He's an awesome little young man who um, has gone to Green Garden Christian School, and uh, we have come to love and be able to help him, and he be a, a joyful part of our life. All these visitors come, and one of the things that I've had opportunity to do, me and Brother John, we actually help cook at the retreat house, which is fun and interesting, uh, cooking for Filipino people and American people and Asian people, and um, but it's a fun and challenging uh, part of part of what we do. Another opportunity I was given while I was over here this time um, was. Due to the generosity of uh, some of the people from Port City, um, I was given the task of buying and giving some goats to several people. Um, it was a pretty complex situation. You have to uh, buy, decide who gets the goats, who you're going to buy the goats from, how you're going to get the goats from here to there, and. Uh, it was a, quite a process that took quite a while to do, but um, I chose some of the people to give goats to were these young couples um, anticipating marriage. They have a 
people who have a, a great future involved in leadership there in Eric Hall. This is, was kind of an investment in them and, and, and their future. And they get a, a new goat, uh, they, they take care of it, they have babies, they, they are able to um, sell, the, sell goats or milk the goats and get the money from the milk. So it's a, 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 a lot of help to them. Some people we gave were some deep needed people at church, and um, it was a, a great opportunity. And I just want to express to the ones of you who specifically um, helped with this this process, uh, I like to uh, thank them. Hugh and Lisa White were so generous in helping with this. Uh, CF. And Ann Godwin contributed this. Um, Bob and Denise Hewitt helped with this. Uh, Lori Miner. And those were somewhat specific in giving money to help with this particular project. But the money in general that people have given overall helped with it too. So all of you have a, have a part in it. And um, it was such a joy. And, and these people were so appreciative, so appreciative for the help. And one thing that is so small but so big to my heart is little gifts of love that people gave me. Sometime on Sunday morning, uh, one of the ladies might, might bring me uh, a piece of fruit. Here's Sister Donna, and that they brought it especially to give to me. Uh, one day, I just almost cried. A lady brought me three small eggs that her chickens had made. Uh, it was such a big gift. And uh, fruit and, and uh, little things that give me mean so much. Uh, right before Brother John was leaving to come back home in December, uh, one of the sisters that we had helped, one of our widows, she brought two chickens, knock on the door, about four Sunday school, I think you would go down to Sunday school, knock on the door and hands me two live chickens. Rooster and hen. And I'm like, what am I going to do with this? And um, so we tied them up and later we got somebody else to prepare and cook them for Brother John's going away party. <laughs> it, was a, it was quite a sweet gift. This lady that we were trying to help couldn't help but give that. Isn't that beautiful? This lady, I just had to take you and tell you the story. It's so sad. Her daughter, 25 years old, she's severely um, paralyzed and <coughs> retarded. She, um, she was assaulted by a member of her family and uh, had a baby, and now the grandmother is raising that precious little baby, Martha. And this is, we went to her home, and she lived in this tiny little shack, and uh, your heart just goes out to her. This is the lady that gave me those chickens. Can you see what a beautiful, large gift that was? We have a family, what they call a family camp, where our church will all go on uh, a uh, Pacific Sunday, we'll go to this nearby retreat that's near the beach and have our, our church service there. We will play games. We will have a wonderful meal with lechon, which is roasted pig, and, and uh, just enjoy a refreshing uh, spiritual and fun time together. A friend of mine, Nadine, was going on a trip to her home island. Uh, on the island of um, got a ferry there, but when she got there, she was going to take her motorcycle and go the rest of the way to her home. And she was traveling with her two little sons. And um, I bought her and her two little sons a helmet to wear uh, on that motorcycle ride. I was worried for them. Many of the people ride motorcycles there. Many of the people ride without helmets. And uh, 
What a sweet opportunity that was. Another wonderful blessing is all the baptisms we have. The people we actually reach and bring to Christ. Uh, the grandest joy of all. Uh, such a blessing to have the opportunity to get to know these people and love them. It, it opens up opportunities for me to mentor uh, young people, teenagers, college-age kids, young adults, as well as the adults. I'm just amazed at the opportunities that God gives me to do this. And by being there a while, I get to get to know them and love them. And there, it, it makes it possible to reach them and share and encourage them and help them to grow spiritually. And sometimes that, that takes a little time, you know. You can't just go in there and shout the gospel and everybody gets it and then you leave it. it it takes time to uh, develop the unity and, and for them to be able to trust you and know your heart is really with them. On a very personal note, one of the grandest opportunities God gave me this year is um, I, I, I spent a lot of time studying God's Word this year in a very beneficial way for me. Um, I, I can say I never read the Bible all the way through. I've read a lot of the Bible in my life, studied a lot, but the, the, the official reading all the way through. And so I prayed to God. I asked Him, Lord, would you please help me and enable me to read your word and to, to give me wisdom and understanding as I did it. And what is so thrilling to me is that He answered that prayer. It truly helped me. Uh, I was, I'm reading a chronological Bible, and I've read all the way through the Old Testament. I've been the, um, again, the New Testament. And um, it's just been wonderful that um, I think maybe before I was reading to read or, 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 or not reading on my own um, abilities, but this time, he really did enlighten me and help me. And I, I just have to say this because this has really been part of this missionary journey. He's really helped me in a lot of ways uh, through his word and, and, and also showing me how through his spirit he helps us and he answers those prayers. So, so wonderful. And I, I, I'm sure it's going to help equip me more as I, my ultimate desire is to reach the law. My heart is heavy for them, the lost. And I want to be part of that, um, reaching them and um, bearing fruit in the Lord's kingdom. Brothers and sisters, I thank you. How can I thank you enough for all you've done to help me make some of this possible? Through your willingness, you yielded to God's will. You helped me financially. You helped me by encouraging me, by lifting me up. And your, your beautiful prayers sustain me and encourage me. And um, I thank you and, and, and don't ever doubt that God sees everything you do. God bless you all.
that nothing says I love you like a goat. <laughs> Depending on where you live. Donna and the shepherds are going to come up at this time. Contribute to the church and just identify a little check. 
very much, Donna, and also Chuck Miller. Chuck has the gift of putting these videos together, and it was beautiful the way your comments matched the pictures. It was very, very good, very personal, very to the heart. So thank you, Donna, and thank you, Chuck, for great organization. Great. And I learned that nothing says I love you like a goat. <laughs> Depending on where you live. Donna and the shepherds are going to come up at this time.
they're the ones that really support, hold up, and are the ideal for service in your kingdom. Father, you know the greatest among us is the servant of all. So we send forth God in that vein, uh, and may we do greater things and specific things to help those people there. In Jesus